Today on Judge Faith, a Louisiana landlord accuses his terrified tenant of making up excuses to get out of a lease. Yeah, I get a text message, my life is in danger. This a grown man telling me that he fell for his life over two raccoons. So I look around to the trees, there's two big old raccoons like this in a corner. He stood up like, <sighs> what? <laughs> Sir, possums, raccoons, and the man in the abandoned house aside, did you have a conversation with him about getting out of your lease because you had a vacancy open in one of your properties? And later, a teen mom accuses her god sister of stealing her identity and sticking her with an overdue cable bill. I see my name on a cable box. I ask her right away, why is my name on this box? She's like, oh, don't worry about it, sissy. It's nothing important. Um, and I was like, well, is it okay if we just put in your name? She's like, yeah, that's fine. The exact conversation is, don't worry about it, and you say, okay? That doesn't sound right to me. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Marco Scott says his former tenant had financial troubles and fabricated stories so he could move out early. He's suing for rent money owed and damaged property. Defendant John Sanji says he owes nothing because his life was in danger and Marco refused to fix the problem. All rise, court is in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Please be seated. Your Honor, the litigants have been sworn in. This is the case of Scott versus Sanji. Thank you, Juan. Marco Scott? Yes. You are suing the defendant, John Sanji? Yes, Your Honor. For $5,000 for rent you say he owes you and damaged property? Yes. Okay, so why don't we start from the beginning? I understand that you leased a home to Mr. Sanji? Yes, he had just got out of a um, divorce, so his wife was pretty much put a restraining, on, uh, restraining order on him where he had to uh, vacate the premises at once. And the judge also told him that he had a certain amount of days to get out of the prop, get out of the um, residence of him and his ex-wife. So this is what he told you? Yes. So there were exigent circumstances yes, Your Honor. for you at the time, sir. And what is this home that you have? Um, it's, um, it's a duplex, um, a duplex home. So Where is it located? In Gentilly of New Orleans, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. So I sped up the process and I got everything situated for him to move in September 1st. So you agree. Do you sign a lease to move into the yes, home? Yes, I did. A one-year lease? Yes, I did. So tell me, what happened? My dog was barking. I have a beautiful lab. And he's never been a, a feisty dog, a mean dog, a barks a lot. So the while I was there, living there, he would be 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Rup, 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 rup. I could never figure out what was going on. So I would go and look and never see nothing. So that morning I went out to run some errands. I came back home and it must have been around 12 something. He started cutting up again. The dog was like there and the bushes and the trees was over there. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't, I'm looking out the window, I couldn't see nothing. So I come outside and I walk down the steps and he's what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. So I look around to the trees, there's two big old raccoons like this in a corner. Okay. So I'm looking now, I'm getting scared because I don't want him to attack my dog. I, I, I love the dog. Yeah. I bought him since he's a pup. He's nine years old. That's my right hand right there. Well, did the raccoons ta attack your dog? No. One of them left. The other one that stayed, he stood up like, ah, what? <laughs> so raccoons now, can be vicious. Yes. They really can. I mean, and so now I'm afraid, you know, I'm really afraid. You're afraid for your life? Yes, my life and my dog. Because I know they can, they can do something. They had rabies. I could get sick. Anything, a and number so of you things. picked up and moved out of the home? Well, basically, I called him, and it was several times that the raccoons came back to the yard, then went to the abandoned house next door, mm -hmm. and he tells me, oh, I'm going to put some cayenne pepper down mm. for the raccoons. I never heard yeah. this. So I've been a cook for, for almost 40 years, cooking seafood. I know cayenne pepper. I know what it looks like. I know what it smells like. I know what it tastes like. I go home every day. There's no cayenne pepper. And when I text him to tell him that my life was in danger, 
He tells me, I'm on the road with my family, my friends. He's gone. I'll be back later. So your life was in danger, and you sent him a text. My I life sent him is a text in danger. And I called That's animal it? control. My life is in danger. You know, I, I called animal control. They said, well, we can't get out there. Let me see proof that you called animal control. Do you I have any have documentation? No it, yeah. What do you say happened, sir? Well, like you say, I was on family vacation at Disney World on a little ride. It's a small world after all. Yeah. <laughs> so I get I a love text. I the details they share with me about so, this case. Yeah, I Go get ahead. a text message. My life is in danger. So I'm thinking, like, why are you texting me? You and need you didn't to call even get a... off the ride to see what was going I can't on. Get off the, well, you, I can't get off the ride in the middle of the ride. So once I got off the ride, I called him like two or three times. I'm like, why are you calling me? You need to be, you know, calling. NOPD, that's what I'm thinking to myself. So finally got a hold of him and I said, you know, Mr. Sanders, what's going on? He's like, man, I woke up in the middle of the night and when I went in my backyard, I saw it, two, two raccoons and everything. And I'm like, again, like, you know, how are you, you just a grown man telling me that he fell for his <laughs> life over two raccoons. <laughs> A grown man talking about two raccoons. Raccoons can be vicious animals. I understand animals. they could be vicious animals. So the minute I, I couldn't do anything at that time. Did you before, put cayenne pepper down? I did. Before I called the well, people. Well, he didn't see any cayenne I, I didn't pepper. He's been there for 40 I years. He knows you, what it looks like. I promise you I, done, I did. I mean, what do you think is going on here? You, you don't believe I think he's trying him? to get out of his lease, pretty Why? much. He's a landlord also. You have property as well? Yes, I do. And someone lives in your property? Yes, they do. He had a vacancy. Once he had a vacancy at one of his places, that's when he tried that's when he tried all to get out of the lease. Coming up, the guys disagree about the dangerous living conditions. I asked neighbors, did they see any raccoons? Mm -hmm. None of them saw any raccoons. Only person that saw a raccoon is Mr. Johnson. And later, an unpaid cable bill breaks the bonds of sisterhood. So what investigation did you do? Because, you know, we have fun, we party, we drink together, we're close. So I was thinking maybe when she was drunk, she was going to slip up and say something to me. Plaintiff Marco Scott says John made excuses to break the lease early. He's suing for rent money owed and damaged property. Defendant John Sanji says he owes nothing because he feared for his safety. Possums, raccoons, right. and the man in the abandoned house aside, okay, did you right. have a conversation with him about getting out of your lease because you had a vacancy open in one of no, your properties? No, I did not. Yes, he Never yes, had he that did. conversation? Never. Well, how would he know that? He know that I had properties. But there I, was a vacancy. Was there a discussion about no, a vacancy? The, the, my, all my properties are still rented. Out of the divorce, I got money to buy another property. Where did you move? Where did you move then? I bought a house. Yeah, I just uh, said All it. of a sudden, he okay. brought a house throughout the whole time and I would lease. He never mentioned that one time. And, Your Honor, I also asked, I asked neighbors. None of them saw any raccoons, no visible sightings of raccoons, no visible of a stranger in the neighborhood or anything. And it's a nice neighborhood, so they wouldn't know if somebody... So you didn't believe him? I didn't you believe him not raccoons? one bit. The only person that saw a raccoon is Mr. John Sign. And so you're in. suing him for rent mm -hmm. for how many months? For six months, the remainder of his lease. But what if you get someone to rent the place next month? You think he should still pay for no, the remainder I'm, of his he lease? He should have to pay whenever um, the, the law that broke the state that we come from, he has to pay up until Oh, I know the law in Louisiana. Lease. You know, that's yeah. where I went to law school. Yeah, all so right, I'm especially okay. familiar with the law in Louisiana. Yeah, so the minute he... <laughs> <laughs> so when he does pay, when I have... Whenever I do rent it out or whatever, he has to pay the amount to when I'm active, when I, um, whenever I rent it out. Okay, Mr. Sanji, yes, I'm back to you now. When you get this text, call me at once. My life is in danger. That's a very polite way to tell someone yeah, that you're in fear for your life. I'm not going to tell him, y'all. If your life in... But I mean, I called him. When you get a chance, <laughs> just in case call. you're busy right now, but when you get a chance, <laughs> call get a chance. me because my I was, wife is in Your danger. Honor, I'm just, a nice, <laughs> I'm just a nice guy. I don't talk to nobody in any kind of way. He responds to you seven minutes later. That's a text. He never did call me on the I, phone. His okay. response, okay. sir. All right, I got you. Immediately. Okay. And he just said he was at Disney World. But he responds seven minutes later. I tend to believe he actually called you because you said, my life is in danger. Perhaps there were raccoons. And I know growing up in Louisiana, yeah and having raccoons in our backyard sometimes, that they can be vicious animals. They are a cause for concern. And if you have a dog, especially, if you're feeding your dog outside, you could be attracting them to the yard by leaving dog food outside. Yes. That's one of the issues. However, you didn't give him notice until you were actually leaving. You could have at least told him, hey, listen, I think I'm going to have to move. But he didn't get a message until when? February? February 1st or 2nd or that, something like that. that. I told um, you January when you picked up the rent. Then I gave you that check. Do you in have that hand. in writing? No, I gave him the check right. Then you okay. lied, Marco. All right. All right. 
Well, Mr. Sanji, calm down. Calm down. I know you been. I know you've been through a traumatic experience. Man. I understand that, but let's just calm down. He also um, seven fifty. He digged a hole in my backyard as well. To Sir, put up he, a... the raccoons obviously were probably responsible for that. Am I right, Mr. Sanji? <laughs> okay, <laughs> since, since, or am I not? Wow. <laughs> Here's what we're going to do. No, because you kept his security deposit. Here's what we're going to do. He kept your security deposit. It was seven fifty. It was seven fifty. Yes. Even if I wanted now, to return okay. it to security, I didn't know where he went. I didn't know where he moved to. So he how could I ghost. return his security deposit if he just went ghost? So I think three months is more than enough time for you to find another tenant to move into your property. So I'm going to order him to pay three months of, of rent for breaking the lease and leaving so unexpectedly. Uh, that's $2,700 in rent. I'm going to subtract from that the $750 that you kept as a part of his security deposit. So my judgment is for you, sir, in the amount of $1,950. Good luck to both of you. Thank you, ma'am. Grow up, man. You know, if you sign a lease, you got to honor your lease at the end of the day. Marco, you need to tell the truth. You're not uh, being truthful about the whole story, but that's the way you roll. That's cool with me. Plaintiff Leah Thompson says a defendant stole her social security number and used it to put cable in her name. She's suing for the balance of a cable bill. Defendant Ariel Wilkerson says she owes nothing because Leah knew about the cable and offered to pay the entire bill on her own. Leah Thompson? Yes. You are suing the defendant Ariel Wilkerson? Yes. For $1,049, you say she owes you for a cable bill? Yes. Okay, Ms. Thompson, why don't you take me to the uh, very beginning of what happened here? Um, well, we met in 2010. Uh, I joined her church, and we were, like, best friends. She took me in as her sister. We started doing the choir together and the dance team together. Also, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so upset. Just, ugh, it just makes me upset, this case. Okay. Also, I had my two kids early at 15 and 17. I was a young mom. and um, How old are you now? 19. And um, she, I told her she's going to be the godmom. She was there for me when I gave birth. She was in the delivery room. So our problem started when I moved in with her in, I'm so sorry. <sighs> so you move in with her, and how long did you live with her? An, a month, because we all expanded Just a month later. Just one month in yeah, 2014? August. Yeah, we left in August. And she said, according to her testimony and what she submitted to the court, she sees a cable box with her name on it that she didn't know anything about. So, no. So, how that worked was she was, like I said, she moved in there probably about two weeks after we had all moved there. We didn't have any cable. We didn't really have anything because we had just moved there. So, at the time, um, I was like, well, we all want to get cable. And I had told her, like, hey, I can't get cable in my name because I'm making payments on another account and that's not finished paying that yet. And she's like, okay. Um, and I was like, well, is it okay if we just put it in your name? And she's like, yeah, that's fine. And so there so, was an agreement according to you to put the cable in her name? Yes. And how would the bill be paid? So we were all were going to pitch in and pay the bill on it. Okay, and so what happened? So when I was there, I see my name on a cable box. I ask her right away, why is my name on this box? She's like, oh, don't worry about it, sissy. It's nothing important. So of course me believing her being my sister, I was like, oh, yeah, whatever. I'm going to go, I believe her. So... So, hold on. You see your name on a cable box. That means that there's cable in the house in your name. You don't know that? And you say... And she said, don't worry... The exact conversation is, don't worry about it, and you say, okay? Well, because I that brushed... That doesn't sound right to me. No, because I brushed it off. I was like, okay, because when I asked her, we were all sitting on the couch, and she was like, don't worry... Because I asked her, I was like, sorry... Well, I mean, I don't understand. Because every time I ask you a question, I want you to answer it. You're, you know, you want to start crying. I'm just trying to find out what's going on with the cable. Sorry, I'm just really nervous. I don't like being Well, just, just, just speak to me. Just tell me the truth. I wanted to do some more, like, deep investigating, basically. Like, see what I could get out of her, because I was living there. See if maybe she would slip up and say why my name's on this cable box. So I let so it go. So what investigation did you do? Just basically, I just laid low, because, you know, we have fun, we party, we drink together, we're close. So I was thinking maybe when she was drunk, she was going to slip up and say something to me. Because <laughs> she, she wasn't being honest with me. She just was like, oh, so I'm sorry, worry, I don't believe it. anything you're saying right now. I don't believe a word coming out of your mouth. 
So I don't know if you're just trying to tell me a part of the truth or, or everything you're telling me is a lie. I'm not moved by your tears because I don't see any coming out of your eyes. I see you dabbing your face with tissue. So what's really going on here? You have about 30 seconds to start telling me the truth. Okay, so the truth is when I moved in because... I don't care when you moved in. I care about your lawsuit about this cable bill. You told me in your statement she stole your social security number. She committed fraud and yes. got a cable bill in your name for seven minutes. You have not been able to look me in my eye and say that to me. Why is that? I'm just really nervous. No. You've been talking for seven minutes. The most important part of your case, you have not been able to relate to me. Okay, I apologize, Your Honor. Um, I have evidence showing that she got cable in my name without my permission. What is your evidence of that? Coming up on Judge Faith, the missing cable bill causes confusion between the God sisters. You never called the cable company and said, hey, I don't have cable in my name. There shouldn't be a box in this house in my name. You never did that, no. correct? You correct. never did that, right? Yes. No, you didn't. Sorry, no. You know what? Somebody's lying to me. Plaintiff Leah Thompson says Ariel knows that she owes and is making life difficult. She's suing for the balance of a cable bill. Defendant Ariel Wilkerson says she owes nothing because Leah offered to put the bill in her name. What is that you're, that you're handing It's a court me? document. What is this? This is a court document showing that I'm currently getting garnished due to me having cable in my name that was not approved. Right now, all I have in front of me is someone who has a cable bill in their name, it's not being paid, and your wages are being garnished. How are you connecting this case to her? So, What investigation did you do? The investigation is when I moved out and got tried to get the same company of cable in my name, they denied me. That's no investigation. That's not an investigation. You never called the cable company and said, hey, is there cable in my name? Because I didn't... I, I don't have cable in my name. There shouldn't be a box in this house in my name. You never did that. No. Correct? Correct. You never did that, right? Yes. No, you didn't. <laughs> Sorry. No. Y'all, you know what? Somebody's lying to me. This, I, I don't can know I what's going on Can I start over, Your here. Honor, please? I'm not going to try to figure no, it no, out. No, no, can I start over, please? No, you can't start over. Did you take her social security number and use it and get cable? Not without her prior knowledge, no. What happened? Um, so she knew about... I asked her for the information. She gave it to me. A house would have gotten her social to get the, get the, get it in the cable. So you set up cable in her name. Right. And we were all with we're going to pitch consent, in. With her consent, you're saying. Yes. And we were all were going to pitch in on um, the bill. Did you do that? Did we pitch in on the bill? Yes. No, because we all left. Okay, that doesn't mean there's not an outstanding bill that needs to be right. paid just because you we don't never, live there anymore. We never received a bill yet because we weren't there long enough to receive a bill. That is irrelevant. You know you had cable. You know it has to be paid for. I don't right. care if you got a bill or not. Did you pay a bill? No. I'm kind of torn right now because I have you who has now admitted in court that you had cable in this apartment right. and that none of you paid the bill. Yeah, she was, she was going to take care of it from what I was being told. Coming up, Judge Faith rules. And now, Judge Faith rules. I think you think the better story for you to come up with is somebody that she stole your social security number so you don't have to be responsible for this bill at all. I mean, I, I don't just listen to testimony. I look at people's demeanor. And I can tell you right now, I know you've been lying to me. Dividing the bill three ways, you owe her $333. Just got nervous, and I wasn't able to explain how I felt. So I learned from this not to be able to split bills with people you can't trust, and not everybody you can, you can call your sister. We're always interested in what you have to say about our cases. Write us with your thoughts or comments. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, or my Instagram. I look forward to hearing from you. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.